so glad it's Christmas. All the tinsel and lights and the presents are nice, but the real gift is you. Happy birthday, Jesus. I'm so glad it's Christmas. Us. The carols and bells make the holiday swell, but it's all about you. You.
Good morning. Welcome to Fourth Sunday Jam. My name is Sage McCann. I am so excited you have joined us. This month's theme is Season of Belief. Quick reminder to invite a friend or family member to connect with us for an amazing experience that is uplifting and inspirational. Worship service just for youth grades 6 through 12. Get connected on Youth Ministries' Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter page, and sign up for text alerts and share our updates on social media platforms. This month's announcements for the Truth Ministry include to check out the Middle School and Real Talk meetings on third Sunday via Zoom, join us and invite your friends for a Limitless Bible Study every Wednesday at 8 p.m. via Zoom, check out Jam Services on the fourth Sunday via YouTube, and if your birthday was in the month of January, please place the date of your birthday along with your name in the group me chat. Most importantly, remember to give your tithes and offerings to your church at Brentwood Baptist Church. Thank you. My name is Jayla Jefferson, and I will be reading the scripture, Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 and 7. A child has been born for us. We have been given a son who will be our ruler. His names will be Wonderful Advisor, Eternal Father, and Prince of Peace. His power will never end. Peace will last forever. He will rule David's kingdom and make it grow strong. He will always rule with honesty and justice. The Lord All-Powerful will make certain that all of this is done. My name is Justin Pottinger. And I'm going to be doing this prayer. May you please bow your heads and close your eyes. God, thank you for letting us wake up this morning. And may you and thank you for letting us get through this pandemic so far. And can you please pray for anybody that is struggling. And just keep everybody in your hearts. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hi, my name is Emery McCann. And today I will be reading a Christmas poem. We all have our own Christmas traditions, and so we put our homes through all kinds of transitions. We set up our Christmas trees on branches, ornaments we dangle. We hang up Christmas stockings along with garland on the mantle. We all have our own Christmas time rituals, and so our yearly customs have become habitual. We shop until we drop, buying Christmas wishes on our list. We check it more than once to make sure we get the right gift. We cook and we bake Christmas pies, cakes, and cookies. We peel, we dice, we roast, so we can binge on all the goodies. We all have our traditions, but they all have no real connection to the true meaning of Christ, miss. They're nothing more than a deflection. Hello, my name is Dashiell James, and I will be performing Silent Night for you. <laughs>
Hi, my name is Tamia Thomas, and I will be reading a scripture for you today. Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up there from the town of Nazareth to Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went up there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloth and placed him in a manger because there were no guests at room available for them. My name is Jayla Jefferson, and I will be reading a poem, Jesus is the Gift. Jesus is the gift that perfectly fits every heart and is with his love that all celebrations start. We rejoice in him as we remember his birth and thank God for sending his only son to earth. He led from a manger to a cross on a hill where he faithfully followed his father's will. He freely laid down everything so that he could live, and there's no greater treasure anyone can give. Like a scarlet ribbon, his love wrapped around the cross to be offered it to all of us at the greatest cost. For each time that we give a gift, we remember that he has done and honor the perfect gift, God's one and only son. Hi, my name is Gabrielle Oliver, and I will be doing the Jesus in Me moment. I will be playing O Holy Night on my flute. One week before Christmas, a well-known visitor made a surprise appearance. I had just finished the household chores and was preparing for bed when a noise startled me. I cautiously opened the door to the front room. To my amazement, Santa Claus stepped from behind the Christmas tree. He placed one finger over his mouth so I would not cry out. What are you doing here? I exclaimed. Then I realized that Santa had tears in his eyes. His usual jolly manner was gone. The eager, boisterous soul we all know was very sad. Santa offered one simple statement. Teach the children. I was puzzled. What did he mean? 
Anticipating my question, with one quick movement, he brought forth a great bag from behind the tree. I stood there bewildered. Santa explained, Teach the children. Teach them the old meaning of Christmas. So many people today have forgotten what Christmas is really about. Santa then reached into his bag, pulled out a tiny fir tree, and placed it on the mantle. Teach the children that the stately fir tree remains green all year round, showing the everlasting hope of mankind. The needles point heavenward, making it a symbol of our prayers that always reach God. Santa again reached into his sack and pulled out a brilliant star. Teach the children that the Bethlehem star was the sign of promises long ago. God promised to send a savior to deliver the world. The bright star pointed to the fulfillment of that promise. God's only son had been born. Next, Santa pulled a candle from his bag. Teach the children that the candle symbolizes that Jesus, God's Son, is the light of the world. When we see this light, remember the one who overcomes the darkness. Once again, Santa reached into his sack. This time, he removed a wreath and placed it on the tree. Teach the children that the wreath reveals the endless nature of God's love. Real love never ceases. Nothing can stop God's amazing love. Santa then pulled from his bag an ornament of himself. Teach the children that Santa Claus symbolizes the generosity and goodwill we show to others because God has given us his very special son. Don't forget to tell the children that St. Nicholas was not part of the first Christmas in Bethlehem. Santa then reached into his sack and carefully placed a candy cane on the tree. Teach the children that the candy cane represents the shepherd's staff. The crook on the staff rescues sheep who have strayed from the flock. God never gives up on people who wander from him. Next, he removed a delicate angel and lifted it to the very top of the tree. Teach the children that angels shouted the glorious news of the Savior's birth. These heavenly messengers sang glory to God in the highest, peace and goodwill to everyone on earth. Finally, Santa pulled out a beautifully wrapped gift. He said, teach the children that God deeply loves people so he gave them his most precious gift, Jesus, his only son. When the wise men arrived in Bethlehem, they bowed before the child and presented gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. This is why we give gifts to each other on Christmas. Then Santa paused. He stared at the tree and seemed to be pleased. I saw that twinkle had returned to his eyes. He turned, looked at me, and smiled. Santa offered these final words. Remember to teach the children the true meaning of Christmas. Please don't put me in the center, for I am but a humble servant. Jesus Christ is the real reason for the Christmas season. I am glad to join all others who bow down and worship him, our Lord and God. Hey, good to see you. It is by God's grace that we're able to see each other, even though we aren't in each other's physical presence. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. I extend to you now the invitation to let Jesus Christ into your life. We are in tough times worldwide and we can't make it without Jesus. So right where you are, I want you to think about something. If you had died yesterday, where would your soul be today? 
Where would your soul be today if you had died yesterday? If you can't say definitely with a surety that it would be with God the Father in heaven, then you need to really think about giving your life to Jesus Christ. He'll make a difference in your life. He will make it possible for you to do whatever you need to do. We won't have to fear the pandemic. We don't have to fear these tough times. We don't have to fear anything knowing that Jesus is Lord of our lives and we have eternal life with God our Father in heaven. We have access to the Holy Spirit to help us, to give us hope in a future that seems dismal, in a future that doesn't seem like it's going to be bright. But with Jesus Christ into your life, we can make it. So today, think about it. You see where that you can join the Brentwood Church there. We're here, Reverend Frazier, the youth group, the youth all over the church are here. I'm here, Reverend Thompson and all of the Brentwood parents and workers, we love you, we believe in you. If there's anything that you need, you can let one of us know. But today, don't leave Jesus out of your life. Let him make the difference. He loves you. He wants you to be part of his family. And with all that being said, and Jesus in your life, I've got a feeling, young folk, I have a definite feeling that everything is going to be all right. Will you accept him? Just say, Jesus, come into my life. I can't make it without you. Jesus, I need you. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, take over my life and make the difference for me. If you've said that prayer and prayed that prayer, Get in touch with the Brentwood Church. Become part of the Brentwood family and jam and our youth church with Reverend Frazier as our leader and Pastor Ratliff as our shepherd. We would love to have you and Jesus would love to be your leader and Lord of your life. Think about it now. If you died yesterday, where would your soul be today? Accept Jesus Christ in your life and you'll be able to answer that question both now and forevermore. May God bless you and keep you is my prayer.